Yay. Okay. So it's Monday, August 6th, and this is our Team Awesome Book Club. We are going to be discussing our Get Over Your Damn Self book from last month. Awesome. Awesome. So much to talk about. And then um, we just went through like a bunch of good news and um, people you know, excited about the parties they've got booked and um, people who are coming to them. Jennifer Muldoon's excited about the meetup group that's got over 50 people. Um, and so, and Holly's excited about the connection she made through an online event. Karen's excited about her awesome party she's going to have tonight. Annette's excited about her happy hour coming up on Wednesday. And I'm excited about the new recruit this morning. So we are starting this week off. My favorite day of the week, Monday. Um, okay. So um, were you just going to say something, Karen? Were you starting to say? No, oh, I just, I'm, I'm texting back um, the host from Friday, my party from Friday, and she wanted a kit 50% off, and I... Oh, yeah. So, so I was trying to figure out how to get her there. She's only $30 off. Yeah, I think the thing with the 50% off, if, if they did offer the workshop kits at half price, people would start stockpiling them. And I just personally, at first I was like, oh, shoot, and then later I'm like, oh, thank God. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Because from our perspective, I just don't think it's a smart business move for them to be able to get the price. Um, so as far as I know, that it's staying the same. There hasn't okay. been a But I will make a note of it just to make sure that we all are on the same page and know what's going on. So um, okay. half price items. Okay, and, and actually, really quick, do you guys have any questions that come to mind right now about I mean, there's probably a lot of things going on in your minds as well as all the new stuff. Does anybody have any questions that they would like to talk about briefly on this call having to do with any of the new stuff that was, you know, released from STIR or any like timeline questions or anything? Okay. Um, always know that you can reach out and text or whatever um, if something comes up. Something I do want to let you guys know is that our team builder calls starting tomorrow, the Tuesday team builder call, they're going to be led by Sonara for a while. So if you guys don't know, she was promoted to vice president of sales by, um, of the company. So she's working as a corporate employee and still working in the field doing what she's always done and what she loves to do. She reluctant like she was reluctant about taking that promotion because she's like, no, I want to be in the field, and frankly, I can't afford to pay her anywhere near what she's making. Um, but she, when she found out that she could still keep doing what she's doing, and then also just basically support the field um, throughout, you know, that she just decided, okay, yeah, if I can better our company and um, and do that, then then I'd be happy to. So. So that's really exciting for us that we have Sonara as more of like a main training platform um, and also as our upline, which is super great. So just mark your calendar for those Tuesday calls. If the call time doesn't work for you, just watch, just commit to listening to the recording because you're going to get a lot of information and especially coming from her. So those start tomorrow um, being trained by Sonara for the next, I think, month or two. And then, um, and then we might rotate through directors who do those trainings. Um, so I wanted to give a little shout out for um, last month for July. So we had our tops um, in my org for personal volume was Jennifer Muldoon with $1,535.30. So yay, Jennifer. Um, and then the uh, Karen Lott was a close second at $14.50 and 45 cents. So yay, Karen. Um, and then Jessica Russell, she's not on. She probably will be hopping on when she gets done working here in a few minutes. Jessica Russell in third with $1,144.20 in personal volume. And then we've got um, Molly Luke, Katie Lamb, Andy Cheryl, um, Kristen Said, and Michaela Brady. Let's see, Kayla Lennon, and then Maggie Kazemba for like all of those make up our top 10 in sales last month. So congratulations, girls. And then for the tops in team volume, it's Jennifer Muldoon with 35.89 and 10 cents since she hit her team leader numbers last month. So that's super exciting. Um, and I will be posting, I know we had like a four way, let's see, I don't have it here. We had like a four way tie of, uh, of people who had a, one recruit last month, which is exciting, which I, I'm, I wrote it down somewhere. Now I can't, I don't know where I wrote it down, but I, I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, 
Karen, you had a new recruit. I did. Uh, and let's see here. My, these reports are so weird. They don't. Um, Jessica Russell had a new recruit. Andy Sherrill had a new recruit. And speak up if you know the other one. Does anybody know the fourth one? Okay. I. No, that's funny. I wrote it down somewhere last night, and now I don't know where I put it. And so, anyways, I'm going to do, I feel bad for the fourth person, but it, it gosh, dang it. Anyways, I'm going to recognize you guys with the pictures and do all that stuff. So just be watching for that on Facebook, so you'll get that too. But I wanted to at least recognize those who are on the phone and, or on the call right now and say good job. So, okay, we'll just, let's move into the books. And if any questions come up along the way, you can push the little chat thing or um, just text me or, or put it on Facebook. But what do you guys think about this book? Okay, I'm going to unmute everybody so we can hear. Um, okay, so thumbs up. Did everybody think it was awesome? Like, did anybody gain anything <laughs> at all from this? So, did you guys mind sharing just something that comes to mind, just one, it might not be your number one takeaway, you might not be able to think of it, but what's one, like, take like, from this book? I'd love it if we could each, like, go through and each of us just say one thing. Um, who's brave and wants I'll to I'll go first. Okay. I want, I love the whole idea about the dirt list. I've never heard about your dirt list, and I... <laughs> I was kind of laughing when I tell my, my closest friends and my family, Hey, you're on my dirt list. And they're like, what? <laughs> so I just tell them, you know, that's, that's really a good list to be on. And I was driving with my family up to Coeur d'Alene and I was, I had them listening to it with me on audible. And my husband looks over and he's like the dirt list. Really? It was <laughs> great. That's awesome. <laughs> Will you tell everybody what the dirt list is for anybody on the call who can't remember? Or didn't? The yeah. dirt list is those people that are so willing to support you that they would buy dirt from you if that's what you were selling. Yeah. So that's awesome. Mom, my mom, my sisters. Yeah. Yeah. My closest friends. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, who else has a takeaway that comes to mind? <laughs> You gotta be quiet. You gotta help her. Yay! Hi, buddy. <laughs> I don't even have mine ready. Um, Annette or Jennifer or Muldoon, do you guys have something? Um, I'm only on chapter five, so I haven't gotten through the whole thing quite yet. I was listening to it while I was scrubbing kitchen floor this morning. Um, I guess so far the just you know the you know, like she said the dirt list was a good thing, and then um just getting over your fear of, uh, you know, calling and talking to people on that list. Awesome. Um, and how we're all like, nobody's good at it in the beginning. I love no. that. Like, okay. I mean, she was kind of like, thank you for trusting me to her friend. Then she's like, I was pretty much a hot mess when I called you to try to recruit you, you know? Um, but that's where the dirt list comes into play with the practice and all of that, which is super great. Um, I guess for me, I mean, it's crazy because it was way back in the beginning of the book, but, um, well, I'll go last. I want to make sure everybody else. So Jessica, are you, are you on? There's a, Hey Yoda. Yes. Yeah. Hey Yoda, it's Jessica. Hi. Hey. I to do with the eight three two. Um, we're just yes. about, like, number one takeaways from get over your damn self book. Does something, does anything stand out? Or just any takeaway, I guess that stands out to you. Yeah, let me see. I listened to it, but I'm looking like I kind of took a couple of notes as I went around along, but I I guess like I wrote something down. I don't remember if she said the F word, but it was like F fear. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that sort of, you know, that sort of like, yeah, it, it's scary to like, you know, reach out or get out of your comfort zone, but like just do it anyways. That was kind of one of the big takeaways for me in reading it. So awesome. Yeah, there's something that we've heard to in past trainings that says do it scared. And mm -hmm. I remember that quote, like when I get nervous, I'm like, do it scared, do it scared. You know what I mean? So um, mm -hmm. that kind of plays along with that same thing for sure. Jennifer, do you have, mm -hmm. um, do you have a takeaway that comes to mind? Did you, how do you feel appreciation? <laughs> what it, wait. Was somebody else going? I think I just talking to her son. <laughs> oh, sorry. 
No, you're not. Oh, that's okay. Oh, shoot. Um, I just missed my turn. <laughs> um, I, um, I mean, there's, there's a lot that's great in it. I'm, I'm actually listening to it for the second time. Um, and I mean, a lot of a lot a lot of the stuff she words in a way is stuff that we've heard before, but she words it in a way I guess that resonates uh, or just reminds well. Um, you know that don't prejudge anybody. Don't I, I like the way that she put it. Don't 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 read their thoughts because they're not your thoughts. They're their thoughts, and you don't know what their response is going to be. Um, and um, I haven't gotten to this part a second time, but just I liked her advice about limiting and putting a timer on social media and, you know, don't waste your time doing that to talk, to be talking to people. And um, I liked the part about the chicken list, you know, talk, be bold about talking to people that just make your stomach turn. Yeah. Yeah. That's one that you have to really go back to that F fear chapter when you get to your chicken list. It's like, oh, it is, it is scary, but it's so true. Cause those are the, those are the ones you want on your team are the ones you're most scared to contact. Really if you think about it. Um, yeah. 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 So I've been really um, trying to think through my list lately and put people on my list that, that I n wouldn't necessarily like, that really have the qualities that I that I am looking for, even if they've expressed no interest in the business. That like I um, I invited some people to the call yesterday that I didn't um, haven't really approached before. One was my former mortgage my lender um, who started her own company or joined a new company. Um, and she, she did our lending like six years ago, you know, um, and I haven't been in touch with her, but she's in a part of the country. She's in Western Washington, which is a part of the country that doesn't have a lot of wild tree and that I would like to expand. And, um, and so I just reached out to her Awesome. And among that, some other people. Yeah. That's what I was kind of mentioning to Holly too, is like going back to sort of how Sonara would reach out to people like that is like, Hey, can I pick your brain for a few minutes? I just kind of want to run something past you, um, make a phone appointment through that. And you can message them, you know, on Facebook messenger or through a text. And then when you're talking to them, like, Hey, you know, I'm a sales manager with wild tree. We're expanding in your area. We're looking for new, um, we're, we're looking for like awesome people who are motivated self-starters, you know, ambitious, no people, um, they're fun that, you know, these kinds of qualities that you're looking for, like, um, I don't know if that sounds like something you're interested in learning more about, or maybe if you have somebody in mind that you could, um, refer to me, but it's just, you know, we're expanding and really we're on track to double the size of our company this year. So it's an amazing opportunity. And it's, it's kind of like when you reach out to people, Sonara actually reached out as if, hey, do you know anybody who fits this description? Like, I'm really looking to expand in your area. And it was a girl that she hadn't seen since she was like 14. Um, and come to find out at the end of the conversation, the girl's like, well, that kind of sounds like me. Like, yeah, I kind of want to hear more, you know, versus like, oh, let me give you my friend's phone number or whatever. So it is kind of by, by, it's almost like you're not putting them on the spot. So it feels a little bit more comfortable. And I think she talks about that a little bit in this book too, kind of that approach. So I know it's kind of like this is kind of like the uh, direct sales Bible. I think at this point that I'm yeah. highlighted to death, and I'm going to keep referring back to it forever. Um, and and I did just so you guys know. I think you might have known that I was going to do this, but um, sorry for the background water for a sec. Um, I had a three-way call with my friend Amy, who is talked about in this book, Amy Bird, and Sonara Brown. Um, at the at last Thursday, right after conference. And holy smokes, we are so excited. So we're definitely gonna keep working together, um, Sonara and I, on just some ideas on how we can implement some of these things. And it was just great to get 
those two brilliant minds on the same phone call, I felt like it was like golden hour and a half. <laughs> it was so great. Um, so I, I was going to say, I think my takeaways, well, I have a bazillion, but I think a couple of them is, uh, one is like your vision, not only like, what are your goals, but what if this doesn't work, then what's the sort of like the pain or like, it's like, what will your life look like if it all works? But will, what will your life look like if it doesn't work? And for me, that was really, really powerful. Like, not only for helping onboard other people into the business, but also just personally. Like, I don't want to. I don't want a regular job. I mean, that's like the ultimate worst. And no offense to all of you guys that have regular jobs, but like, I've been there before. I don't want to go back to that. Like, I want to be my own boss and be in control of my time. Um, you know, and then all those things of just financial stress and this and that, or the things that we won't. You know, the big dreams we won't have. So I think that was huge for me. And then just the three-way call. Like for me, that was just giant, huge light bulb moment of how to implement these three-way calls for our business because of the support that people feel by having, um, you know, some of you guys on the call had onboarding calls with me and the person who recruited you. And oh my gosh, I just think I can see the difference in your businesses versus people who we didn't onboard that way because we didn't know better, you know? And um, I think it's, is just really powerful, whether it's an onboarding call or, um, or a three-way call to close a deal. And, and we'll get more into like, how can we implement the three-way calls for recruiting into our business? But just keeping in mind that the three-way call for, for like a recruit is not meant because you're not going to try to recruit that person yourself. It's more like they keep kind of well, let me think about it a little bit longer. Like you've given them all the information, you know, maybe you sent them to the discover wild tree event or you sent them some information, whatever. And then you get on the phone with them for kind of your follow-up call. And then they're just, you're trying to close it, but it's like, it's just not happening. They just want to think a little bit more. And so the next step you tell, okay, well, the next step is just actually, we set up a conference call with um, with my business partner, whatever you want to call, we'll have to come up with like terminology that we think sounds good. Um, in this book, they say, you know, they use business partner and they use conference call versus three-way call. So people don't feel ganged up on, you know, just a three-way call can kind of feel like, Oh, it's two of them against me. Uh, I don't know if I want to be in that corner. So, you know, maybe we set up a conference call with one of my business partners who could definitely fill in any of the blanks that you might have questions about. Um, would this time or this time work for you? And that's kind of your next step. And then we do that call that should really be a super short call, like 15 minutes or less to just basically close the deal. Like what are the last objections that she has so that you can have that third party validation. If I was on the call with you, I'd give a little quick story about my um, success with wild tree, you know, and um, answer any last questions that person has and really just be kind of that brave person to ask that that question to close the deal like hey so you know are you ready to go get going we can get you signed up right now um, and I think when you're getting started and you don't have maybe you don't feel like you have a super strong story to share um, you're really excited but maybe you feel like gosh this person just needs something else that's when that three-way call can come into play and then um, and then always don't be afraid to use third-party validation stories. She talks about that in the book too, which I think is really huge. Um, and so I'm meeting with someone tomorrow who's a nurse. And it's like, I, the first thing is, you know, when I was at STIR, somebody was speaking on stage who, she's a NICU nurse, but she's been able to cut back her hours down to just like two shifts a month or something because her wild tree income surpassed what she was making as a nurse. Um, so that's just a great story that I can share tomorrow instead of just talking about my personal story, it's like what story could relate to this particular person I'm talking to about the business. Um, and then I love how she says, you know, if it's the business isn't for them, they, in their case, they become like a customer for us. They probably become a booking is what you would hope for. Um, if they don't want to host, then of course we're going to have our auto delivery program coming. So they could become an auto delivery program. You could help get them set up on which meal solutions are best for them. And then lastly, just asking for referrals is really huge. And that's something that um, other companies, well, this, you know, the company referred to in this book, they're really good at asking for referrals. And Southwestern, our parent company, is huge on asking for referrals. So we're going to have more and more training on how to ask for referrals the the words to use and i think that there's a lot of that in that whole happy hour stuff that we've got too so um okay so as far as the book club goes um i was just going to kind of scroll through here and just in the book and 
kind of go through the things that I highlighted and then I'll just after I kind of give my little two cents about the chapter, then I'll just open it up if anybody wants to add. So if you happen to have the book there, um, it might be helpful, but if not, that's okay. So um, the four reasons people fail, this is really interesting. Reason number one, they're not coachable. That's, um, you know, pretty, pretty important is to be willing to be coached and even change some of your thoughts about the way things are done if, if it's working for somebody else. So that's, that's true. Uh, reason number two, they don't treat this like a business. Sonara always says the work is flexible, but not optional. Um, and that's so true. Like you can't just kind of float along and think you're doing the work and maybe you're getting to it once in a while and think you're going to be making six figures anytime soon. It's just not going to happen. Um, Something I, I just started coaching. I hired a, a personal like development coach that I had my first coaching call this morning. Um, and she said for me, you know, to, to reach the goals that I have in the next year, she's like, no matter what your schedule looks like, no matter what your day looks like, you have to commit to 30, between 30 minutes and two hours of income producing activities, meaning reaching out to people to fill your calendar or recruit people into the business. So you guys might wanna just jot that down for yourself too. It's like if you're really wanting to get to the next level in this business, that means 30 solid minutes minimum a day. That's not really that much time if you really think about it, but 30 minutes to two hours. So obviously some days are gonna be more flexible than others. Um, and she said, you know, I told her Mondays are a good day for me to work like, I can work my business like eight hours on Monday. I took a walk with my daughter today, but otherwise I've been pretty much working since I got up. Um, because there's no interruptions or distractions really at my house because my daughter doesn't nanny on Mondays. And she said, that's great. You can get a ton of work done on Mondays. But she said, I, I can tell you, you still have to commit every day of the week to doing at least 30 minutes a day if you really want to reach your things. Because what's going to happen is you're going to have a day that you have more time to put into it. Maybe that's a Saturday or Sunday for you guys if you're working during the week. But you're gonna have that trickle down effect that people that you reach out to on the day that you have lots of time, they're gonna be replying at different times that might not be that day that you set up to do all your work. So it's gonna be great because you'll build that momentum on the day that you're available, but then you'll have to just remember that you're gonna to have to, you know, be working, like be getting back to them at some point in time. It doesn't mean when your text message goes off, like, oh, I'm gonna drop everything and respond. It just means that you're gonna have a little chunk of time set aside each day that you can respond to those um, responses. So I thought that was good. I like it when people give me like actual numbers, like you have to do this many minutes of work <laughs> if you want to be successful. Awesome. Okay, I'll do it. You know, um, here's another light bulb moment for me, how to spend your time. And this is why I'm revamping our coaching calls on Thursday when I realized I was spending like 12 hours doing coaching calls on Thursdays. So Maybe not quite 12 hours, but it was a lot of hours. And I love talking to you guys, so it's hard for me. But it says that you should devote at least 80% of your time to your personal business. And it's kind of like you have to, like you put your oxygen mask on first before you do, you know, put it on the other people on the airplane. It's kind of the same thing. Um, so your personal business means that you're talking to people, finding the people who want to be your customers, um, finding the people who want to join your team and training your new reps. The sweet thing about this is that our new training platform is so awesome and easy to use. And are you loving it, Karen? I see you nodding. Loving it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, love yeah, a little piece of what's to come next month and you can see how amazing it's going to be. So now the amount of time that we have to spend training our newbies is like, is like not much really keeping in touch with them maybe a quick text maybe a quick 15 minute phone call here and there because you want to be engaged you know i think it's important to make people feel like they're a part of something with another human too but it can be more like hey go through these modules let's connect after that to see how you're feeling after you've watched these videos done these worksheets read this information and then i'll answer any questions you have instead of let me try to train you on all of this so it's just going to be amazing I think Molly hopped on because I see a 208 number. So somebody, somebody in Idaho, hello. Um, and then basically, oh, and then newbies are considered the people in their first 30 days of business. After that point, they basically have everything they need to do their business. And the next step in, of when you're going to like start investing time back into them is when they're really, meaning like, 
maybe a weekly coaching call or something like that if they need it is like when they're ready, they want to be a team leader. You know what I mean? So you have your newbies and then we call them your LITs, like leaders in training. And then you've got people in the middle who they might want to be a team leader, but they might not be like, they have to sort of be doing some activities that show that they're on their way to team leader. Otherwise really they can do it on their own if that makes sense. You know, so you, you just, I guess backing up is like spend 80% on your personal business, filling your calendar, recruiting, um, you know, doing your parties and then and giving out customer service stuff and then training your new recruits for the first 30 days. And then 10%, she says 10% devoted to three way calls. So we're going to have to figure out how to implement that. But you guys, if you're going, if you're following that recruiting cycle and then you're getting sort of stumped at the end, like I just, gosh, I feel like I'm having these conversations, I'm not closing the deals. Um, or just this particular person is tough, you know, and I don't know why I can't get through any of these roadblocks to get to it, then definitely reach out, reach out to your upline if they're experienced enough to do the three-way call. And then, I mean, and I think you can honestly ask them like, Hey, do you feel like you could do a three-way call with me to kind of close this person for recruiting? Or should I reach out to the next person? You know what I mean? And just kind of do that up the ladder thing. And then obviously I'll help as much as I can with you guys. But the idea is that we're each getting more and more um, able to do these calls for our downline, you know, so that we can all do three-way calls. Like um, I couldn't obviously do three-way calls for everybody's team all the time for the recruiting. If it was every single person, every single time, or else I'm not going to have 80% spend on my own personal business. So, um, and okay. And then the last 10% should be spent on your personal training. So plugging into the training calls, webinars, I really would encourage you guys to go through that new rep training, that training platform. I'm going to go through, through it from start to finish because I'm sure that there's a lot that I can still learn in there. And also I want to feel really comfortable and confident when I'm sending my new recruits to the training platform so that I know what they're seeing. And if you're, I mean, some of you guys are still like on the newer side of wild tree, you know, maybe less than three months of being here. Um, so I'm sure there's a lot of training holes that were missed when you guys got onboarded into Wildtree. So take some time to just go through that when you can. I Like Sonara said that on our call this morning was like, if you spend one day and that's the only thing you do for your Wildtree business is go through that whole training um, platform, whatever you want to call it, it's, it, it was time well spent because you're going to feel, you're going to have, you're just going to feel good about where you're at and then it, as far as sending new people there. Um, and okay and then the other th the other part of that last 10 percent is your so it's your personal training and then coaching your non-newbie business partners which i would call your lits for for our in our case as the people who are trying to promote to leadership um and just to give you guys like a little heads up we're going to have some structured lit coaching and training that's going to be coming in September, like mid September. So, um, just have that in the back of your mind for like really getting your momentum going right now in your business so that you can take advantage of that. And I'm, I'm working with Sonara on, um, on that as well. So it's going to be, that's going to be really exciting. Um, okay. So reason number three, I guess reason number two is really that they don't, you don't treat it like a business meaning you're treating it like a hobby, but also the other side of that is you're maybe you're not spending the percentage of your time in the right places. So just be mindful that 80% of your time should be spent on your personal business. Okay. And then that way I, I'm not always a good example of that, but I'm going to be working on being better at that. Cause I, I really like working with you guys. <laughs> it's really fun. So, um, okay. Reason number three, they're not willing to get uncomfortable. So that goes without saying, uh, push yourself out of your comfort zone. They say what the magic happens outside your comfort zone, which I am a firm believer in. Um, number four, they're not hungry enough. So I think, I think that doesn't have to mean that, um, that they're actually need the money, but more like are really clear on their big goals and their why, you know, and their vision. So um, you know, some people do this, like I have to have a paycheck from wild tree from, to make ends meet. Like it's become part of our regular income. Um, but I think of other people, you know, maybe you guys have your full-time jobs, you're fine financially without Wild Tree. Wild Tree's going to provide some extra things. Just get, keep that why and that vision really in the forefront and be really clear about that. So you, you know why you're doing this. Um, and I had highlighted, you got to figure out what it is that you really want that you don't already have. Um, 
because if you want something bad enough in this life, we make it happen. It's just that simple, which is super true. Um, I like okay. when she says, put on your big girl panties. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking of uh, Molly and I had a, we actually had coffee with um, a, a guy that was interested in selling wild tree. Yeah. And I was thinking, I listened to that part and I just started laughing because I was thinking, oh, that's so John. We just need to tell him to put on his big girl panties. Yeah. Speaking of John, is he, what's the scoop? Um, we need to wait till the, the Lewiston Roundup gets over with because he's so involved in the Jackson Foundation and all the advertising for that. So that was his request that we just kind of touch base with him after that. So that's first week in September. Oh, nice. So after that, we'll touch base. But. So when you go into your training, you guys are going to see our new hot list of 100. Instead of the contact list of 100, they changed the name to hot list of 100, which I think sounds way more exciting. And also it gives you places to say, I thought of you because so that you can, you know, we do this on our like onboarding calls, like, okay, who can you think of that you can bring into the business? Why did you think of them? Blah, blah, blah. But this is like your list of a hundred that is having you write all these names and then why you thought of them. I would um, send him that list and just say, Hey, just have, just print this off and have it in your back pocket, literally. And when you think of people, just add them to the list. That way, once the roundup's done, he can be ready to go with a list of people to contact and you guys can get his launch party scheduled and get him up and running. Um, okay, so I know I, another thing that was kind of cool. Well, does anybody else have anything to say about all of that in chapter one? Chapter one, why people fail. I liked the uh, turn around the open sign in your brain. That was just a really great visual. I even wrote down, I don't know if you could see it here, a little oh, open please. sign. Yeah. Right there. I love that. Yeah, like you're open for business. Um, I'm writing down when all your little, everything that you guys say for takeaways. Um, or most of it anyways. Um, okay, so. So why are you here? Um, and, and this just goes into the why. We've already talked about this at length. Um, you guys can rewrite you can kind of go in and rewrite your why, which is really important to do on a regular basis is just revisit it and then maybe tweak it because things might have changed. You might be seeing a lot more success in this business than you thought was possible out of the gates. Um, or maybe you were a little overly ambitious with your goals. I, I mean, I always say keep your goals big. Who cares? I mean, at least what shoot for the moon, you'll fall amongst the stars or something. But, um, but like you might think, wow, I was going for this extra pocket change and I'm actually making significant money. So I think I'm going to up my goals a little bit. Like we're going into our busy selling season. So just, you know, keep reading your why, keep reading your vision and revisiting that. There's a good tool in our new training where you can, um, it helps you with writing out your why. But what I, what I found um, really important, I guess, that I had never thought about was your why has to be about you um, was something she said. So it just it has to be something that resonates with you, that kind of lights a fire inside of you and gets you going. Um, I'm trying to think of an example of, it's just, it has to be deeply personal to you. Um, she said she's worked with a lot of people who've made their why about other people. Maybe it was their kids or their husband. I'm here to tell you right now that in order to get stuff, to get yourself way out of your comfort zone during the scary, uncomfortable start of your business, your why has to be about you. So. That is true. Um, yeah, she, she talks about your why is evolving along with your business. So key to consistent growth is not stalling out and is to, to continually check in with yourself and your priorities. Um, and, and then we talked about peeling back the onion. So, you know, you talk about like, um, well, money's not a good why. Anyways, someone might say, well, I want to make $2,000 a month. Okay, what does that $2,000 a month do for you? And then how will you feel once you achieve that? You know, and kind of digging back, digging deeper. And um, really, I think it's about finding your emotional connection to your why. Um, I'll share with you guys, too. I have something that's called the what, the what's to the why or something that my coach um sent me after our call today and I'm supposed to fill that back and fill that out and get that back to her. So I'll share that with you guys on our team page if in case it's a 
helpful tool for you to be able to really like dig in and, and find your why. It would actually be a really cool tool for you guys to do and then send to your upline so that we know how we can help to motivate you and keep you, um, you know, just be good accountability partners for you. Um, she talks about your goals being smart. So smart, or excuse me, the smart goals, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time bound. Those are really smart things. I mean, obviously, <laughs> I didn't mean to. <laughs> uh, LOL. Anyways, um, but no, it is, it's important because all those things have to go into place to really take a goal and make it happen. Otherwise, it's just these like little fantasies that are out in space that we all have. Um, so I know I posted on our team page, like, what are your goals for the month? And thank you guys for, um, for commenting on that. I think it's super important at the beginning of each month to revisit what your goals are going to be because a lot changes each month, especially like if you're caring, you're, you know, you're going back to teaching coming up. Like obviously you're gonna have to really think things out and, and be a little bit more proactive, maybe on really planning your time out and how you're going to make things happen or Jennifer you know, moving across the country. And I mean, we all have things going on, but I'm just saying different seasons in life definitely change what our availability is and, and that affects our goals. So you might want to keep your goal the same. That means you need to maybe be really, really good with your time, you know, to fit it all in. But, um, I think it's great to do that, you know, at the beginning of the month. And then I think every, every Sunday or Monday kind of start to your week, revisit that goal, see where you're at, analyze what has taken place so far and what you still need to do to make sure you hit that goal by the end of the month, you know, instead of like, here's my goal, like hopefully it happens, we'll see. And next month I'll just put a new goal out there. It needs to be like, um, really it comes down to like daily activity. But I think if you, if you check where you're at each week and analyze that to then recreate a new plan, go back to what your goal is, recreate a plan, get excited about it, um, and keep on going through what we call the prosperity circle. Um, it's just super important. And a lot of people, I think, skip that analyzing stage. I don't really like that stage because it feels unproductive, you know, because it's like, ah, I'm sit here and figure stuff out. But I've learned to like it a lot more because it tells me, it gives me direction on my plan. So I do that with my trip tracking, you know, at least once a month. Where am I at with the trip? And I encourage you guys to do that. If you haven't already printed the trip tracker and fill in where you're at and, and then look at like, hey, there's still time to earn this trip. So map out what it would take to um, just work backwards and say, this is what I would have to do for the next like seven months or however many months we have left to earn the trip. Um, because how much fun would it be to go celebrate in Colombia together? It's really awesome, you guys. And they, I mean, I'm talking nice resorts for free. So um, so I really encourage you to check that out and then, you know, just talk about, or I mean, just, just make sure you're making goals that stretch yourself. So I feel like there's a difference between like unrealistic and stretching yourself, you know, um, like, I don't, if you've never recruited anybody, you say you want to recruit 15 people this month, ah, uh, it might be a little bit of a far fetch, you know, but you, you can say like, I don't know, whatever it is, you know what I'm trying to say though, is like, you want to push yourself but you want to make your goals like hopefully you'll get close to reaching them, even if you don't quite reach them. And then just make sure your act actions are matching. Um, and I like the quote, a goal with, well, a goal without a timeline is just a dream or rather a dream with a plan becomes a goal, something like that too. Um, write down your goals, share them with your family. Um, and then kind of break it down into smaller goals, you know, so that you've got, if this is what I want to do this month, then this is what I need to do this week. And these are the actions that need to take place. So if you're doing the pillars accountability group with us, I know we've kind of been like hit and miss with really being involved on that Facebook group, but ultimately it's for your benefit. If you print off that pillars tracking sheet, even if you don't participate in the accountability group, um, We'd love your feedback at the end of the 12 weeks just to see, you know, if you liked the tracker, if you'd change anything about it, but ultimately like the impact that this tracker is having on your business because tracking your activities, it's really like, oh, I didn't actually get done as much work as I thought I did. <laughs> or if I am reaching out to people, I'm not getting an outcome. What do I need to revisit? What trainings do I need to go back to? Um, so... 
yeah, focus on the process of reaching the goals. Another super, okay, if you guys didn't watch that pillars accountability, well, it was like the pillars call, Zoom call, whatever it was. We had Jenny Newt on there. And if you, I, were any of you guys, did any of you watch it? I sent it to all. Yeah. So Jenny Newt is who I just yes, hired. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Um, and I just hired Jenny Newt. You guys, Jessica, Jennifer, and Annette, you guys met Jenny at conference, which was so awesome, um, at STIR. And so she's my coach, which I'm so excited about. And anyways, I think what she said on that call is really, really powerful stuff stuff. And it's, it's connecting your confidence to the actions that you take and not to the outcome, not to the results, because ultimately it's a numbers game. So if you talk to enough people, you will get the results eventually. So pat yourself on the back at the end of the day. If you did your 10 reach outs to people and don't, don't just wait to be excited when you got that booking or when you got that recruit. Focus on the actions and doing the proper actions, and then you will get the results. So I think that's, um, I think people get really down on themselves when they are like, oh, I still don't have a recruit. I still don't have a booking, you know, when really it comes down to just, um, hi, honey. Um, hey. It's just about the actions, just consist consistently doing the right actions. Um, Yoda, I need to go. Okay, good luck tonight. Thank you. Post on our team page tomorrow. Let us know how it goes. Okay, we'll do. Okay, bye, Karen. Bye. Um, oh, you know what, you guys? I think what I'm going to do is just go to the end of each chapter. I like how she has these action steps. Um, so does anybody have anything to add to that chapter? Okay, I think that was mostly about your why. Um, okay, and then she talks about your list is your life. Make it a long one. So I would just encourage you guys to go into our new training platform and print off the... Sorry, my husband got home and the dogs got excited. Um, print off that hot list of 100 and start filling that out so you guys can... Just kind of revisit. I'll bet you you'll come up with a lot of new names that you hadn't thought of before. Um, and in the book, she gives you, you know, an idea, lots of ideas of um, categories, but our hot list of 100 does that too. So do that. And then we already talked about your chicken list and your dirt list. So that's fun. Um, Keep adding to your list every day. It's like a living, breathing document. So when you're out and about and you're running into people, like definitely keep adding your contacts. Um, sometimes people freeze with like, let's say you have all these potential people that have kind of said they might host for you or you think they'd be really good at the business. So you've got them on your list for the business. And a lot of people sort of freeze when they have people in their funnel and like, don't keep finding new prospects because they're ho they're so hopeful for the people that they have already. So just remember, don't do that. Like keep reaching out to those people because it might like the gal I recruited this morning, you know, it might take 15, 20 reach outs to, for them to decide to join. But in the meantime, don't wait around for those few that you keep reaching out to and over and over and over, you keep reaching out to them and then you just keep adding more and more people to that. Um, I think that's really important. And I think, I don't even know if that was in this book that I read about people freezing, you know, because they, they feel so hopeful. It's like a winning, it's like your lottery ticket's a winner until you know it's a loser because it's just sitting in your pocket there. Um, okay. Anybody have anything to add about your list or like people that you came up with later that you reached out to that you had good success or any, anything having to do with any of that? You guys are all so quiet. I think everybody's muted. <laughs> no, Jessica, you're not muted. And Molly, I don't think you're muted. Are you gonna I was going to say, I really like how she talked about um, keeping people going through your funnel and not getting stuck on people. Like, get them through, and if it's a no, just it's the next one, please. Like, that really helps with, you know, recruiting. Like, it's not the end of the world if they don't decide to join your business. And you can always follow up with them later. Like you said, 15 to 20 calls for that one recruit that signed up this morning. 
mm-hmm. which was awesome. Yeah. And I really like how, didn't she mention something about like starting with your dirt list and then you can move on to your chicken list too? Yeah, Karen, she mentioned that you were on the call and that was, she was saying that for like one of her takeaways was. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that for practicing, but then I really like just um, talking about you do want those people on your chicken list. Like for me, it's like if I talk to somebody on my chicken list, I'm way, way more able to talk to other people that may be like neutral or on my dirt list. You know what I mean? So I kind of felt like the opposite, but I felt like it also gave me like the courage and the unction to just pick up the phone and start a conversation about it like period yeah yeah I think you're so right because it's like if you can call the people on your chicken list you can like do anything right um you called on a little bit later do you want to add any like any other takeaways that stuck in your mind from the book um oh my gosh I just felt like it was golden information like I've told everybody on my team, I don't know who's on here right now, but I'm like, I've had a lot of years of training in network marketing, and this is like the top-notch golden information that you want to read. Like, I'm not just going to read this book once. I'm going to read it again and again because there's something that will hit home right now, and then if you go back, it will hit home again because she's like spot on with so many things. And one thing, I know this is later on, but I might have to hang up soon too. One thing that really hit home with me is she figured out what her time would be worth per hour if she only worked 20 hours a week and she's going to earn a million dollars a year. And it came out to $962 an hour. And it's like, oh my gosh, I'm getting paid $962 an hour. I'm not going to sit here and look on Facebook. I'm not going to sit here and wonder what I should do next. I'm going to get to work and get stuff done. Like, that yeah. was a huge change. So I've been telling me myself, myself that, like, I am worth $962 an hour, and I'm going to work until it becomes a reality. Like, I don't know why it just, like, but that was just so eye-opening. Like, oh, my gosh, you're right. My time is valuable, and I got to work to be, like, work like you're worth that right now and then you're gonna be worth that because you become what you act like yeah. you become what you think of so anyway i'm in and out of service because i'm coming home from cascade so i might get out of service so yeah that's my two cents <laughs> awesome i love it um yeah super eye-opening when you're like hmm am i really doing the activity that is going to be giving me the $962 an hour. I don't know. I've rethought that a lot of times when I'm doing my actions after hearing that. Um, okay, so chapter four talks about what's your story. And I think that maybe in the new training, like I said, I've only skimmed over it. So I ha- I'm going to start in, from the beginning and go through it. But I think they might help you write your story. So um, I like how she says facts tell, but stories sell. And that's so true. Um, that's also just what Wildtree's been doing with our marketing is story branding it because it's just like, you know, they, they give the example of like the farmer's insurance commercial. Like that's how they sell is like by, by painting a picture of a story that you're watching and how can the person you're talking to relate to that. Um, and let's see, I, I like also that she says, a well-crafted story is fact wrapped in emotion. That was kind of cool. So she talks about your why is not your story. So don't get those confused. Um, your story, just your elements of your story would be who you are and where you've been, what's happened in your life to cause you to look for something more, how you heard about your company and why you had to be a part of it, what it's doing for you or going to do for you. Um, and, and then don't be afraid to use, and, and she's talking about this story about yourself is like a 45 second to a minute story, because honestly, we don't want to sit and talk and talk about ourselves because for some reason, people, they just kind of start like, ah, you know, it's just this weird thing about people talking about themselves gets old. So I think what's really powerful too is to tell other people's stories. And I have used that um, at my parties for quite some time now. And it's really generated a lot of interest. And I try to choose three stories 
you guys have probably heard my stories. One is um, about Danae Skistad on my team, whose husband's a pilot. She was a stay-at-home mom, um, blah, blah, blah. And well, and I, I guess I could quickly tell you her story. She, she didn't need the extra income. She was looking for something more in her life, really, just to be a part of and have meaning um, just outside of being a mom and a wife. And what she found value in is that um, when, she, when her wild tree meal was cooking itself, she was spending quality time with her daughters doing their homework after school. And she just realized like light bulb, oh my gosh, I can help other people do this too. So hers was kind of more mission driven, I guess. And then now she's realized like the income um, and what that can do for her family and leads the sales team. But also she just earned her first trip um, and was in Panama with us for, for her first incentive trip that she earned. So it's obviously becoming a lot more than she set out for it to be. Um, and then I have my story about a school teacher named Karen who, you know, is, she's a full-time school teacher with two young kids. It's not, it's not the Karen who was on this call, but they're both school, school teachers named Karen, and they probably both have similar stories. But anyway, she, this particular gal fell in love with Wild Tree because they have a family member with celiac disease. She um, needed to be able to feed her family and just fell in love with that Wild Tree was a safe way to do that. And then just realized that sharing it with people was just so natural and so fun. She just kind of had a blast and ran with it and her first paycheck from her first full month in business was over a thousand dollars and she used that paycheck to buy a raft um they live in missoula they live across the street from the river so she used her paycheck to buy this raft for her family to you know spend their summer rafting down the river and um was really exciting so and then my last story is about a doctor named jennifer muldoon who um she, you know, works full time as a doctor, has two young kids at home and fell in love with the concept of the meal planning because obviously her and all medical professionals, Jessica, anybody else, um, they, you know, making dinner does is just stressful. It's not something they want to think about and it's a great solution for them to have mealtime solutions. And, um, and actually these people were finding in the medical profession are um, even just a little bit burnout of being away from their family so much and sometimes being the first ones to drop their kids off to daycare and the last ones to pick them up. And so um, Jennifer, like many other medical professional, medical professionals in our business are working um, their wild tree business to provide the income that they can cut back on their hours working as a medical professional. So, um, and some people are hoping to, you know, fully replace their income and just do wild tree full time. So those are the three stories I share. And I, I do that because I've got three different, I've got a stay at home mom, I've got a school teacher and then I've got a doctor. I feel like those stories should resonate with almost everybody. One of those stories will resonate with almost everybody at my parties. So keep that in mind when you're doing, um, I know we have our happy hour script. And so maybe there's, I, I actually haven't perfected that whole script yet. And, and so I don't even know if that comes into play, like giving some third party stories or not. But these third party stories are really powerful when you are having recruiting conversations. So if you have somebody, in the business that you're, um, you're like, gosh, she just would be so awesome at this. I really want to have a conversation with her. Then, you know, post on our team awesome page or better yet post on another, like, um, Mandy's team grow page where more people are going to see it. And, um, and even like post it on our team page and say, Hey, Yota, would you mind posting this on our director page or something? Um, just to try to get as much, diversity in the answers, but you might have somebody who's an attorney. Sonara just signed up um, an attorney in the business yesterday. This gal wants to quit her job. She wants to make six figures by the end of this year. Um, she's on fire and willing to do the work. I mean, these people are out there, you guys. So, so just if you're like, ah, I have this person who's a nurse or who's a school teacher or who's a uh, whatever, like just any kind of profession that they're maybe wanting to leave from or just any scenario post and we will comment with the stories that we know. Um, and I know I actually talked to Snara about, could we come up with a way to have like this little like, um, resource where us as wild tree reps could get in and search like stories about success stories about attorneys, success stories about nurses or medical professionals, you know, whatever. And then we'll have those third party validation stories. Um, available at our fingertips to use for our recruiting calls. I think it's super, super, super powerful. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're thinking of people um, and reach out so we can help you with other success stories that might kind of match up with the person you're wanting to reach out with or reach out to. Um, I want to add something to that too, Yota. Please. Oh, 
it's when I signed Karen up on my team, I used your stories that you use, but I use like I have um, a dental hygienist and they want to build a house. She wants to build it, you know, debt free. So they're working towards that using the tax write off. And that story is what got Karen hooked because she wants to build a house. Oh, so yeah. really the stories really do work. Yeah. And there's something about, I mean, I don't know if you guys were bored when I was talking or not, but it seems like when you're telling somebody else's stories, it draws people in. When you're talking too much about your own story, it's kind of like, I don't know what it is. I think part of it too is just the third party validation of like, I'm telling you someone else's successor. Of course you want, of course you know that I'm really excited about this business. I have whatever sort of success and I want you to join my team. But when you're telling someone else's story, it, it's like people lean in, you know, like they, they want to hear more or something. And, and then it just validates, you know, what we're saying too. So it's really awesome. Um, okay. Anybody else have anything you guys want to add to that or success stories having to do with that? Okay. Keep in mind that your story will evolve as time goes on. And I've revamped my story lots and lots of times. So um, just keep that in mind, you know, and, and you'll get more comfortable with sharing your story and sharing other stories as you practice. Hey, hey Yota, it's Jessica. I would say something. I think it's important. I, I like that it's the story is like, what is it doing for you? And then what is it? what are you hoping it's going to do? So it's not just like, Hey, if you're just getting started, I usually say like, you know, it's for now I'm, you know, paying my grocery, my grocery bill. I'm hoping to, you know, build a team and yada, yada. So you can sort of like, you know, you can tell them where you're at. Cause I think people are kind of curious, you know, and then you can kind of, you know, I, I like that then like what it's going to do for you down the road. Yeah. So. I love that. Thank you for sharing. I think that's super important for people, especially when they don't have a huge story at this point. I mean, like you said, it might be something, it might even be as little as like, you know, I'm, I'm keeping my freezer stocked with healthy meals right now and I'm getting out and having some fun, but really my big goal with this business is this, and that's what I'm on track to accomplish in the next, you know, six months or the next year, or whatever it is. But that's really, yeah, that's really key. Thank you for sharing. Um, okay. The next chapter, how I talked my way to seven figures. And that's what we would all love to be talking about. Um, let's see. So thousands of conversations goes back to, it's all a numbers game. People, it is all a numbers game. Um, yeah. And sorry, I'm just kind of scrolling through here, seeing what I have for, Okay, these are really good. Her reach out rules. So I'm just going to read them out loud. And, and this will be great too for anybody who listens to this recording that didn't actually read the book. Hopefully you guys get some benefit out of it. And hopefully you decide to read the book after this. Um, but reach out rule number one, don't be at attached to the outcome of any one conversation. I think Karen said that or Molly said that somebody said that earlier. Um, it's so important. I think maybe Molly said that. Um, you just, you have the conversation, you follow the cycle of recruiting or the cycle of selling, whatever you're doing, you follow it, you learn it, you print that sucker out, paste it, you know, tack it up on your office wall, whatever, so that you're going through those steps and you're not attached to the outcome. You're just doing the steps and then you're just doing the steps again. And pretty soon it's going to be so second nature. You don't even have to look at your sheet of paper for the steps. Um, don't be on the hunt. Like you're not out like a prowler, like a whatever, coyote or something. Um, be genuinely getting to know people and genuinely sharing, you know? No, rule number three, less is more. That's really important, unless you have that type of person that wants you to give them every single document and number and this and that. Never give more information than somebody asks for. Number four, be authentic. Number five, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. I think she used the example of her first recruit that she was kind of a hot mess when she was talking to. And, um, you know, she thought about it later and was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that I 
that you actually joined me in this business with all the hot mess of conversation that she had with them, but um, that person was right for it. So it didn't really matter. So that, that goes back to just like, do it scared. You know, don't be afraid to talk to people. Um, number six, if you find yourself convincing, stop it. I love that she said, we are not in the business of convincing people. We're in the business of sorting people. I'm just really wanting to share this with you so you can decide if this is a good fit for you. Talk about how easy that feels like when you, even when I just said that, it just like feels good because it's not a push force. It's a total pull force and it's, it's all about them, not you. So that's just a great feeling. Um, rule number seven, listen, really listen. So when you're talking to someone, ask a lot of questions and then take a lot of time to listen to what they're saying. That's super important. And then you can use their words back to them when you're kind of, um, you know, coming up with, what to move on to or answering objections for them or whatever the case is. Um, rule number eight, work from appointment to appointment. This is super key. So when you are talking to someone, um, make sure you have your next appointment set up, uh, especially for a recruiting um, call. So, you know, that would be where if you've given them some information, you've answered a lot of questions, you're, you would say like, okay, the next step is actually to have a conference call with my business partner. She does conference calls on Monday afternoons and Thursday evenings between this and this time, like which time slot sounds like it'll work better for you. Um, or however that feels comfortable coming out, but just let her know that's the next step and then set the appointment for that next phone call. Um, rule number nine, don't count your chickens. So I think that might be where she talks about getting hung up on that funnel being like full because you have all these people in the hopper, but you, um, I'll just move from here. I'm just going to move so my husband can, sorry guys. Um, but yeah, you don't want to just like, oh shoot. No, 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 no. Did I literally just lose everyone? Oh my gosh, I thought I lost you guys. No, I'm here. I'm here. Somebody oh. the screen went away. I'm like, no. <laughs> okay, I'm going to my dining room now. Um, okay, yeah, so you don't wanna just be like, oh, so hopeful about those people that you have in your funnel that you forget to keep adding people. That is um, like counting your chickens. So. And I've learned the hard way that sometimes the people who you think are most likely to join your team actually are not the ones who join. And the ones who you had on the back burner that you spent a little bit more time reaching out to end up joining. So, um, or the timing's not right, so just keep on keeping on. So rule number 10, lead with the business and default to the products. That is something that we are trying to, like we cannot stress enough in Wildtree. And something that, that we found that people were not doing, um, have not been doing, is people have been so caught up on like the products, and then we started talking about solutions, which is so great, but ultimately the business opportunity is the best thing that we have to offer to people, and then you're gonna wanna talk about the booking, and then if, if that doesn't happen, move into you know them being a customer, and with our auto delivery, um, Club Wild Tree launching next month, then that's going to be the perfect place that you'll plug them in is help them with a solution, get them plugged into the Club Wild Tree so they can get the perks back, and then ask for referrals of who do they know who might be a great fit for this business. Um, rule number 11, don't leave rambling voicemails. Okay, it was good that that was in print for me because I am the biggest rambling voicemail lever on the history of the planet. So you're going to want to leave super short voicemails. I encourage you to find that in her book and maybe even print that out if you're a rambler like me. Have it stuck on your office, you know, your bulletin board or something when you're making your calls so you see it because she's got really good examples. I'm, I don't know where they are in here. Um, rule number 11, let's see. Okay, here's her example. Hey Jane, it's Romy. Sorry I missed you, but I'd love to pick your brain about something. I'm available to chat tonight at blah, 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 or tomorrow morning at whatever. Give me a call. If I don't hear from you, I'll give you a jingle tomorrow. Thanks, talk soon. So super short, you're not giving any information. You're just saying, I wanna pick your brain. And then you're giving her a couple of options when you're available. Otherwise, you're leaving the ball in your court that if she doesn't call back, you're calling her again. And they're expecting that. Uh, rule number 12, lead with what's in it for them. 
will not, um, obviously you want to be, let's get over there so I can think of an example. People, um, okay, as I honed my prospecting skills, I saw how people would become more attentive and engaged in the conversation when I started connecting the dots between what I had to offer and what it could do for them. So I started leading my conversations with what's in it for them and how people just like them were building a business like this. So that goes back to that third party validation too in there. Um, and you can use the words like I thought of you because we talk about that a lot. I think I thought of you because of whatever is leading with what's in it for them. Um, rule number 13, if it's a no to the business, ask for referrals. We kind of talked about that. In our case, we probably go from the business to, um, to a booking and, and then to the you know, auto delivery, Club Wild Tree, and then ask for referrals at that point. Uh, rule number 14, don't end the conversation without talking about becoming your customer. So just like we said, it's just kind of following. It's just knowing that ultimately, if you want to make money in this business, it's about recruiting. You know, it's about building your sales team. So that's where your focus wants to be um, and should be. Um, so who wants to chime in? Here? You know, so I had something to say about that number that don't be on the hunt. I listen to that and I was like what does she mean and I'm because I'm like I'm always looking for somebody you know and I think it's just like a, the frame of mind like I have something special to share and I'm looking for people who want what I have to offer I really like that phrase and I think it's like again helping other people get what they want instead of you just like being on the hunt that kind of helps clarify that second tenant for me so I just wanted to mention that yeah that's really awesome um I'm dotting that down. Well, I'm just going to draw it a little bit and then I'll put the page in there. Um, that's so great. And that's something we talk about too in the beginning is like, you have a really great gift to offer to people. You're just going to share that gift and whoever is like the right person to receive your gift will take it. You know, like not, oh, I'm trying to, when it's all about you with your recruiting and sometimes, okay, truth be known. <laughs> Truth be told, when we are like really close to earning a trip or really close to a promotion or something, it does kind of get a little bit like, oh my gosh, I feel like I am on the hunt. Um, but that's a good reason to be really consistent throughout the year so you don't have to get to that point. But really still, it's like, okay, well, if you get to that point, you need a lot more recruits. That just means you need a lot more, you need to be having a lot more conversations so that you can still find the people who are right. Because when you get into that convincing mode, you're just gonna push people away. I mean, that's really what ends up happening. So yeah, just think of it, like you said, I have something great to share with people, I have something great to offer, um, not who can be my next victim. Because <laughs> it is, I mean, we do have something great to share. So um, I love, love, love the section about making a list before you call somebody of their pain and then the no pain. I think this is brilliant and um, you can find out if you're thinking, oh, I don't always know everything about the person I'm reaching out to. She says, you know, kind of stalk them on Facebook a little bit and just see what their life looks like and where you can kind of point out some things they might be missing out on. Um, and that might be extra money. That might be flexibility. That might be whatever it is. And then the no pain is how your, you know, wild tree can, help them in those, um, with those things that are their pains, I guess. So her example was like the pain for this particular person is like, Mrs. Making her own money, Mrs. Time with grownups, Mrs. Identity outside of being a wife and mom. And the no pain is bringing an income, social collaborative business, and can have it all um, ha hands on mom, like you can have your business and still be a hands on mom. Um, but I think that's really, powerful it's a really 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 good sales technique is to they they call it like cut open the wound there's like another analogy or whatever is like cpr is like cut up cut open the wound pour salt in the wound and then help them see like how you can help them resolve their their issue so that's a really awesome chapter anybody else want to chime in about any of that okay 
So chapter six, she's interested, now what? Um, so this is kind of that decision-making process. And I think this probably moves into, I highlighted like literally almost the whole chapter, so it's like hard to pick out. Um, so at this point, I think what I would say is you are, you are already in that cycle of rec recruiting. If she's interested, you've already had the prospect in mind. I don't have the cycle in front of me, but I know it's like you, you find your prospect, um, determine why Wild Tree could be good for them, or maybe it's the what's in it for them. Tell your story. You know, she's probably intrigued at this point. So you're going to kind of continue through that recruiting cycle. And then if you get through that whole cycle and you're to the close and you can't close the person on your own, that's where you're going to reach out to your upline for a three-way call. Okay. And if your upline's not available, then you can reach out to me. We're going to try to keep it in a go to your upline first kind of setup because um, I don't know if I would have enough time for to do all of them. If, you know, if I was like, Hey, I'll just help all of you guys. Cause I like to say that. And then I realized oh, there's not enough hours in the day. And um, unless your upline is fairly new, you know what I mean? And you, and there, I, here's, here's what I said earlier on the call. If I don't know who all was on the call, but basically reach out to your upline and say, Hey, I have this prospect who is like really, close to making a decision. Do you have time to do a 15 minute three-way call? Is that something you feel comfortable doing or do you want me to reach to my upline, you know, above you? And then, and then just kind of work it that way. So we're here to help you. Um, but I think, and, and then also the verbiage that they use in um, this company is a conference call and you're a conference call with your business partner. So I think maybe we should just use the same language is working for them um and like we said before that way they're not going to feel ganged up on because a three-way call can feel can sound a little bit intimidating um but the clear goals of the three-way call or the conference call um we the goals are to a enroll a new business partner or b book a follow-up appointment or c ask for referrals and enroll them as a customer um I don't know what the follow-up appointment, I was kind of feeling like the three-way should be, maybe the follow-up appointment is just like, if she still needs to just like talk to her husband one last time and then, you know, you guys, or maybe she's waiting to, for her paycheck. I know in their company it costs a lot more money to get started. So it's probably something like that. Like she's made a decision, you're gonna have that follow-up call to, to get her enrolled or whatever. Does anybody wanna add anything about all this or your guys' thoughts on three-way calls or conference calls and stuff? I, um, I am curious, I mean, I, I'm kind of excited about the possibility of a recruiting three-way call, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I think we've talked about them as more with onboarding, but not with recruiting, mm -hmm. and I'm excited to kind of have the opportunity to do that a couple times, just to, because I feel like I've fail to close a lot and that 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 kind of experience and mentorship would be helpful for me yeah well I, I agree I'm actually kind of hoping that I bring a freeway to Sonara like a real doozy you know that I can't close and I'm like I'm gonna get her on the phone and see what I have I mean not to bypass I could go to Mandy too Mandy's awesome Mandy O'Halloran but I just kind of want an excuse to like go straight to <laughs> and just hear the magic in action <laughs> and like record the call if I can so I can share it with you guys. Um, but yeah, I think that's the key here is that the three-way call is a training opportunity. You know, it's not just to help that person close the deal, but it's to help that person hear somebody who's recruited more do their thing. Um, exactly. I feel that way a lot, Yota. Um, I've been in other independent sales businesses and I didn't feel that I got enough training in it. Maybe that's why I didn't succeed as well. Mm -hmm. So these three way calls, I feel like are just going to be so monumental to be like, to have that extra ear and to have another person help me out with these. So that's why I'm super excited about them for sure. Awesome. And then keep in mind, you guys, um, after talking to Amy, you know, who's, who's my friend in this book, 
she said, so the three-way, if you have a three-way call to recruit somebody, then that just kind of, you just kind of turn that into like, let's say, yeah, they sign up. Then at that point, it's like, awesome. Welcome to our team. You know, Holly's going to get your, Holly will help you get everything um, filled out or sent in or whatever you have to do to get going. But just wanted to take a second to welcome you, let you know we're super excited to have you part of our team, part of our organization. Um, and Holly's going to be able to point you in the direction for all your training, blah, 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 moving on. So that is, if you have a three-way call when you recruit somebody, you don't, in their business, you don't do a three-way call for the onboarding call. Because the one of the main reasons for that three-way call is so that person feels really supported. So just like Holly said, not only does Holly feel supported because she has somebody that's got her back to help her train, like on the job training to be building her team and doing recruiting calls, but that person who got brought on also sees that support. And they know that Holly's not the only one who's got her back. Like, you know, Molly or um, Karen, wait, who's, who are you under Holly? Who's your direct? Is Molly your direct? Are you there? I don't know. I just drew a blank. Um, I think Molly's. Her yes, direct. I'm directly above Holly. Sorry. I was okay. on mute. No, that's okay. Everybody's on mute. I'm like, I'm here by myself. No, I'm kidding. Um, no, I, yeah, I thought so, but I just was like, oh gosh, all you, all you Lewiston people, you're exploding over there. I don't know what's going on. Um, but, but Molly's going on. That's what. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> um, did you guys see her video of her running up to win her Starbucks, hundred dollars in Starbucks cards at Stir? No. Oh, I'll post it on our team page and break. Please I did do. not share that. Yeah. I'll, I'll I did share. not share that, but my daughter watched that today. I'm like, what are you watching? And she's like, some person getting an award, I think. Oh, that's so <laughs> and cute. I'm like, oh, Kimber, that was me. And she's like, you are crazy. I'm like, yeah, I know. I was excited. Yeah, that energy was awesome. And then the, you'll have to listen at the end. The very last thing that Sonara said is future director right there, <laughs> right at the end of the video. But um, that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, totally. So, so the thing is, is that, okay, not only does Holly feel super supported in recruiting and building her team because she's, you know, Molly's helping her with that like last part. So we don't want to use a three-way call as a crutch. We want to use it as a really, really magical closing tool when it's needed. But, um, but like you might be stuck in different parts of that cycle in the beginning when you're getting better, you know, as you're practicing and stuff. So you might have to use it like a little bit sooner in the beginning because you maybe haven't recruited anybody yet, or maybe you, or maybe like Holly, you had a really easy recruit the first time. So now you're going to have like somebody who's a little tougher or something, you know, whatever the case is. Um, so anyways, definitely use the three-way call as, as a great recruiting tool um, and training guy or training aid. And then just remember that that person who's coming into your, you know, who's joining your team is going to feel really supported because not only does she have Holly, but she also has Molly, you know what I mean? That have her back. So it's, that's something that my friend Amy said was really powerful is just that people feel like super supported. That's almost the most important part of the whole three-way call thing. So if they, if you have a three-way call for the recruiting call, you just, you know, the upline, the up upline, whatever you want to call it, um, just welcome them to the team. Say we're super excited to have you, you know, we'll be sure to add you to our team Facebook page or group. And, um, and then you'll be going through your training steps and Holly's going to be awesome to be in touch with you to, you know, see if you have any questions along the way. If Holly is still in her first 30 days of business, then Molly is going to be kind of partnering with both of them a little bit closer on that journey. Okay. And we hope that everybody has that problem where you have a new recruit in your first 30 days. So you're kind of walking them together through it. But then after that point, um, you know, if Holly's already gone through all of her training, she's been in the business over 30 days, then Molly kind of passes the baton to Holly. That's her recruit, lets her kind of help and train and mentor her. All the training, you're not even training the people, you guys. You're just sending, you're just making sure they're doing their stuff in our brand new training module, which is amazing. Um, and then you're just kind of keeping in touch with them and talking to them, maybe texting a couple times a week and maybe talking to them once a week for 15 minutes, you know, for their first 30 days maybe even twice a week if that's what they need, but just really um, being their support. And now that you don't have to be a super experienced rep to train somebody because all that training is right there for them. 
which is super awesome. Um, okay, moving on. Uh, so yeah, just know if you have a situation for a three-way call, just reach out to us and we'll see where you're at. Oh, here's another thing that's key. Making sure the person on the three-way call knows just about as much about that person, that, that potential recruit, as you do. So like Holly has this potential recruit who she's gone through, you know, the first, I don't know, three, four, five steps of the recruiting cycle with. Um, when she's setting up that three-way call with Molly, she's going to make sure to send Molly a minimum of, 20, of, of an hour before the call, but hopefully like 24 hours before the call or ish, just a quick summary on that person. So that way Molly goes into the call with already brainstorming, like maybe some third party validation testimonials, you know, whatever she's going to need to be able to be really quick and effective and um, not take more than 15 minutes to do that phone call. And then it'll just go a lot smoother. So that's something to remember. And I'm going to be working on like a check, like sort of a checklist. Like if you're going to do a three-way call, I'm going to come up with something. I'm hoping to kind of partner with Sonara on that so we can implement that into our, you know, recruiting, closing part of the recruiting cycle. Um, okay, so I object is the next one. Just remember that when people uh, present objections to you, that means they're interested. You know, they're thinking about it and they're engaged in your conversation. Um, and then I love the feel felt found, you know, I totally know how you feel. I actually felt the same way or, you know, one of my team members felt this, the same way, but what they found after blah, blah, blah is this. And that's just a super easy way to validate what they're saying. Um, you know, empathize with that, but then move on to how the outcome was good. Um, so she goes through a lot of the typical things. I don't think I have enough time. I think I'm, I don't want to bother my friends. I don't know enough people. I'm not a salesperson. Timing isn't right for this or that. Um, is this a pyramid for crying out loud? That just drives me crazy. Pyramid scheme. <laughs> It's like, this is legal, everyone. And there's actually products involved that we're selling. Um, oh, another key point, she says, whatever you're unsure of is what you'll get asked about most. So get clear about stuff in your business. Get clear about Wild Tree and get most of all a solid, solid belief in what you're doing because that is going to be really, really powerful. If you if you're wishy-washy and you don't really believe what you're saying, it's, it really comes through to other people. Does anybody have anything to add about objections? Or anything that comes to mind? Okay. I'll try to crank through these last ones since we have like 15 minutes left. Um, okay, she's not just that into you or is she, chapter eight. Um, so this talks again about people being stuck in that funnel and you can't get them through. Um, let go of the fear of losing what you don't have. That goes back to that like winning lottery ticket of my mother-in-law would always say this. She's like, the winning lottery ticket, like when it's in your pocket and you haven't checked the numbers yet, it's like always a winner until you know it's a loser. And I think people like having recruiting, potential recruits in their funnel for the same reason. It's like until they say no, like they're a possible yes. But guess what? They're just sucking your time and your energy and, it, and it's taking away from reaching out to other people if you're just like clinging and hoping to the fact that maybe this one is like a winner. So um and, and then also keep in mind that if people are stuck in your funnel, that it says most of the time you'll find that someone's stuck simply because you're not asking enough questions. So just keep on asking questions. There's lots of examples in our um, recruiting cycle where it breaks it down. And let's see. Yeah, and she just kind of goes into just some ways to keep people on, moving on through. Um, a lot of people have self-doubt, you guys, and that's a reason why they don't say yes to the opportunity. So you might have to kind of work with them and, and help them realize that, um, you know, 
we all kind of were there at one point, not knowing, just being unsure if we would be good at it. Um, she gives lots of examples on how to reach back out to people, which I think is really valuable because follow-up is so key. Um, and just again, that it's just all about talking to enough people and, and honestly falling in love with the daily grind. Like at the end of the day, we have to keep reaching out to people. So love the process, get out of your own way, get over your damn self, whatever you want to say. Um, anybody have anything to say about that? All you quiet little people out there. Was that where she went through the seven touches per person or is that later? Mm, that's good too, that's a good question. Um, where did, so. Like where she's like, you're not being pushy, but you're being professional. And unless somebody says like, hey, don't contact me again, it's okay to like reach back out to them about whatever new stuff's going on. But yeah. I don't know if that's this chapter. Well, she's talking about, yeah. When, or is that the next one? Uh, well, oh, it might be in the next one because the next one's the fortunes and the follow-up. Okay. But I love that you shared that. Okay, maybe. Yeah, that's probably it. Sorry. I'm getting ahead, but because um, I don't have the book, I was just kind of like following my notes. But um, okay. Anyways, to be coming up. Never mind. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Actually, do you want to continue sharing what you're, what you're sharing? Because let's just talk about that now because we're on to that chapter. Oh, um, yeah, I, I, what I wrote down from that was the, you know, that you're not being pushy and she was saying like, you're, but remember you're a professional and unless, you know, some of you will say like, Hey, don't contact me again. It's okay to touch back with them. And then she gave a couple of scenarios where it'd be like kind of an excuse to reach back out to people, like some sort of update on the business or like a milestone, like you're, you know, promoting or something said like new product launches some sort of event in your city um she talked about some sort of like news or media coverage um go giver i'm not sure what that was maybe some sort of you know charity or fundraising or something and then like changes in life like somebody's pregnant having a baby their kids are going to school probably change in job would make sense there and then like giving examples of somebody like them that are doing well um, those were the sort of what I wrote down. And then I think that sort of goes with your, like, that brings in the, like, I thought of you because kind of thing and like whatever their struggle is. And then like, well, what if, you know, wild tree could, you know, fit in with, with whatever you're doing. I kind of thought about that as well, reading through that. So, um, anyways. Yeah. I love all of that. Thank you. Um, so great. Yeah, those third party testimonials will come in super handy in those circumstances. And just another good reason to keep your contacts organized in some way, shape or form. I'm actually hoping that there's a way that we can, um, was somebody going to say something? Okay. Um, if we could have it in our database that we had our customers organized, you know, by their profession. So I know you'd probably be able to search like for somebody, all your customers that are in like one zip code or one state or, you know, different ways you can filter it. But I just, after reading this book, I'm like, oh my gosh, we need a category for the professions because that is huge. You know, people wanting to escape from the eight to five and having more freedom and flexibility. And as more and more people are quitting their jobs because of wild tree, being able to reach out to people in that same line of work is really, really huge. Um, does anybody else want to add? That was really awesome, Jessica. You basically went through that whole chapter and I, I love that. And actually would love if anybody wants to go through another chapter because <laughs> I feel like I've been talking nonstop. One more thing is I thought, I thought seven was like, oh my God, that's, so much I'm totally bugging people if if I touch them seven times but honestly probably one or two it's not enough people have so much going on and so many alerts and they forget a text and whatever so that made me feel better about you know just continuing to to reach out I don't know if I've gotten to seven on anybody yet but 
you know, that more than just one or two is, is perfectly, you know, expected, I guess, to get results. So that helped me too. Yeah. And there, there was like that Harvard study, which I don't know, she kind of referred to like these different studies that she didn't know how like accurate all of them were. But one that I've always heard about was like, most people say yes between their, it was like between the fifth and 12th contact, but most people give up between like the first and third contact. So there's like so many people being missed because people didn't keep on reaching out. So it's, it's not only that you're not bothering people, it's that statistically you're probably not going to get the sale or the recruit um, or the next step or whatever, if you don't keep reaching out, like at least five times, you know, and then seven might be more like that magic number where it actually maybe takes place more often, um, on the seventh reach out, but that my new recruit this morning, I mean, I've been communicating with her, you know, and I know she's been interested, but I have reached out 15 to 20 times. In fact, on our call, she said one of her apprehensions was like, she didn't know if she had the follow-up the amount of follow-up time that I put into people because of how many times I followed up with her. I'm like, that's interesting. <laughs> you know, and I said, to be honest, I probably followed up with you more times than I've ever followed up with anybody who's joined my team because she had just moved to Alaska. She had a lot of stuff going on. It'd be like somebody trying to recruit Jennifer Muldoon right now. I mean, a job change, moving, you know, across the country, this and that. It's going to probably take more than the average amount of times when you're reaching out. But, um, but you know, you just keep on keeping on. And I kept on filtering other people through too, but she signed up this morning. So it's like super exciting that you don't, don't give up. Um, okay. Anything to add to that, you guys, for the follow-up? So how fast can we get through the other half of the book? Let's see. <laughs> Chapter 10 is the key to duplication. Um, do you have notes on this, Jessica, since I know you have a lot of notes on the book? Okay, let me see. I don't have them by chapters. I have the five, three, two. Is that where you are? Um, where you do five new reach outs, three funnel, or is that the last chapter still? Oh, gosh. Um, For daily growth. Um, I love that five, three, two. I don't real, so. that's, that's what I have next from my notes but I don't know where that is sorry awesome so all once we, you know and, okay so basically the more complicated our process is so the point of duplication is just is being duplicatable it means keeping it simple keeping it duplicatable because you're following a system so what's so awesome is that we have all these systems now that Wildtree is providing us with so it's just going to make this business like Oh my gosh, so much easier. And then when people see that it's easier, they're going to feel that they could do it too. So um, another quote that's in here is, okay, well, okay, here, let me, let me back up. Here's a short list of what you should be doing to start the duplication process. Constantly adding to your list, reaching out and reaching back to people on your list several times, inviting people interested in the business to three-way calls or events, and if it's the right fit, adding them to your team, adding those not interested in the business as customers or bookings in our case, and asking for referrals and getting paid. So these are like, this is, this is what we do. Um, and then also having fun. So the thing is, you want to lead from the front. So there's this, this old saying that goes, um, your team is going to do half what you do right and twice what you do wrong. And so uh, just a side note, I am selling every month, you guys, just so you know. I'm not putting my numbers out there for our organizational recognition because I'm the one recognizing and I want to cheer you guys on. But I want you to know that I am like always selling consistently, you know, and recruiting and um, and definitely like leading from the front as far as that goes. So it, it talks about to build big, you must commit today to being the top producer on your team. Okay. It's going to be awesome when you have people who pass you up. No problem there, but don't focus on, I mean, what you want to focus on is you want to focus on you being the top producer so that you know, your team is going to follow suit. If they see you doing parties and they see you having sales and they see you recruiting, they're going to do that too. Um, and they're, and really if you're their leader, they're not going to push themselves 
they're going to think they're being really successful if they can get to where you are, you know? So if you're just kind of half-assing your business, they're not going to push themselves any further than that either. Um, so this is also just an interesting thing. We can teach, we can coach, we can inspire, we can collaborate, we can laugh, we can have fun together, we can dream, we can plan, but we can't motivate. That has to come from within each of us. I think that is really huge because you can't teach somebody to be motivated. They have to motivate themselves. Um, and just teaching them basic skills and systems so they can duplicate, which the company is doing for us now, which is amazing. Um, okay, I'm gonna cruise through here a little bit faster. So chapter 11, the bullshit we tell ourselves. Um, I don't cuss that often, but there I did. Um, I don't have time for this. Oh, huge quote. What you're really saying is, I haven't made it a priority. I love it when she says, the next time, I think it's in here, the next time you find yourself saying, I don't have time, instead try saying it's not a priority and see how that feels. I thought that was like, wow. That is a really important thing to keep in your back pocket. Um, so, so why don't you have enough time to reach out and talk to people? Because it's hard. But here's the thing. It's the hard stuff that's the most important. So at the end of the day, you guys, 30 minutes to two hours, depending on what your goals are in this business of reaching out to people, income producing activity, getting, you know, talking to potential recruits, getting bookings on your calendar or, or coming soon, adding them as a auto delivery customer, which you can already do with the shakes. Um, who cares what else you do? Like literally at the end of the day, None of the other busy work that you might be doing for your business matters if you're not getting your calendar full and talking to people about the business. That is plain and simple. That's the way it is. And it, it probably, you know, those are the harder things to do. But the more you do them, the more comfortable you feel. Um, feel free to hop in anytime, anybody. We'll try to... Oh! Daily follow. -up. I, like, I like IPAs a lot better than CSS. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the reality though. You, I know I get what you're saying, but the IPAs are the CSFs. The, the problem is if you don't track your activity somehow, there's no way to figure out how you can reach your goals. And I had a little eye-opening light bulb when I talked to Jenna Newt on my first coaching call today. And she's like, this is a struggle I have with the wild tree directors who I'm coaching. She's like, nobody wants to track their CSFs. And I'm like, yeah, I don't really want to either. But reality is she's like, I can't help you make changes to reach your goals. And you can't even help yourself if you don't actually know the activities that you're doing. So the income producing activities are what you track on the pillars of the CSFs, unfortunately. And Kind of important but you can track it however you want as long as you're tracking it somehow was somebody molly were you going to say something sorry i was talking to my mom about collaborating a drop point um oh. i i really like how she encourages to just uh, like i said do the important stuff like the income producing activities that are going to produce results and do it every day. And it doesn't always take effect right away, but if you consistently do it, you're going to consistently grow and it won't take long for it to grow. Like mm -hmm. I, that's just what I kind of pulled away from it was just sit down and do it. And I like how she said, keep track of how much time you actually put into doing your business. Like, you know, if you're honest with yourself about how long you're looking at Facebook or how long you're checking your emails or, you know, stuff like that, that really doesn't produce results. That makes a big difference in what your business looks like right now. Like, period. What it looks like right now based off of what you're doing when nobody's looking. And that's why tracking your activities is so important because it will show you what 
I mean, you'll find out which act, how many IPAs you're actually doing, you know, when you're tracking your pillars or your CSFs or whatever. I'm going to get real good at tracking you guys because it's like part of my coaching is that I have to track and I have to send it in. So I'll be able to tell you at what point it gets easier because I don't like that part either, Jennifer. Um, the daily follow-up reach out system was the 532 method. Um, I think it's great. It's just, it's not exactly what we have found with the history of wild tree to be exactly the same, but let's just say you decide you're going to do this instead of the pillars for starters, at least fine. You're reaching out to five new people. You're reaching back to three and you're quickly, quickly checking in with two of your business partners, like two people in your downline. Um, even if it's just a quick text or a shout out on Facebook. So I do feel like that seems less overwhelming sometimes than like our 10 call a day thing that we have. Um, so I'll talk to Jenny Newt about that too and just kind of see, and to Sonara and see what they think about that if they feel like that's enough reaching out to, um, you know, to get to the next level in your business. Um, I know we're at five o'clock, so I kind of wanted to wrap it up, but I did like her challenge of getting 25 recruits in the next six months. Like that's somebody that they would consider to be a runner in their business. So think about that, you guys. That's, that's one recruit a week, basically, um, which means you need to have 10 business conversations a week. So just to kind of break it down for you. Um, so what I'm thinking about is that there's a little bit of the book left that we didn't get to go through, but that's okay. I think if you guys have anything that you want to add, like any other, just I'll, I'm going to type up under this recording. I'll post this recording on our team page and then I'll type up some of these little in the comments. I'll kind of list some of those little highlights and takeaways that you guys had from the book. And then if you, if there's anything else that anybody wants to add or, um, or whatever, just add it to that. And then what I'm thinking is like, let's keep these. If everybody is okay with this meeting time, I know it's not perfect for everyone, but I was trying to accommodate people on the East, you know, in, in well, where are you, Jessica? You're central. I think you're central time. Um, I and, think I'm central. Yeah. Yeah. So I was trying to make it work. Oh, and then Jennifer's going to be, are you going to be, you're going to be, Jennifer's going to be Eastern once she actually moves to India. She's on the very Western edge of the Eastern time zone. So, you know, if I do a three o'clock meeting, at least it kind of works for different time zones. So it's not too late. And then it, I guess it's not even going to work for Eastern time zone. If you guys have a party that night, because obviously you'll already be at your party, but, um, the people on the phone, do you guys feel, I guess you can't really like, tell me unless you just unmute and say it but did you guys like this time or would you prefer like an evening like later evening time i personally like this time when the kids get out of school it might not be as nice but i think it's nicer than evening because we're always doing stuff or doing parties and lately all my calls have been in the evening so i like this time okay I like this time for this time zone. For this time zone, I know. Um, okay. Well, you know what? Let's just, we'll just kind of play it by ear. We won't commit to next month's time yet, and maybe we'll get some feedback from everybody on what would work. But I would like to, oh, shoot. The first Monday of next month is Labor Day, which is probably not great for us to do our book club. Um, so maybe we'll do Monday the 10th. Oh. I forgot to announce the next book. I was gonna, I was gonna kind of get some feedback from you guys, but then I got kind of an overwhelming um, recommendation. So I don't even have the book, I ordered it, but our next book is gonna be The 10 Second Rule. Um, I don't even know who the author is off the top of my head because I don't have it in front of me, but I almost feel like it's Tony Robbins or something, but it's a pretty well-known author. Anyways, Jenny Newt recommended it, and then Tegan Braun just read it, and she said, I would highly recommend to read this with your team. So I think it's going to be great. It's about building confidence, I think, and not, and just kind of doing it scared, you know, and breaking through those, those walls that hold us back and stuff. So I'm super, super excited about that book. So, so order on Amazon or download The Five Second Rule, 
and I'll post a picture of it on our team page. And then we'll just plan for September 10th, which will work out fine because um, this is already the sixth of the month. So that gives us, by the time you get your book, that gives you a full month to read the book. And, and then I just figured we'll do, um, I think this book had a lot of, imp of information. So it would, you know, it took maybe longer to talk about everything and it's also, we didn't even get through all of it. But going forward, um, we'll, I, I definitely want to use our monthly team call to, you know, do the little bit of recognition like we did in the beginning and then go over the book and just any like question time, like we had some question time in the beginning if anyone had questions on what's going on in our business and for everybody to share good news. So just to kind of make it like our monthly team meeting Zoom call and we'll just keep tweaking the times that we have it until it works for as many people as possible. And then we'll always post the recording in case people you know, can't be on. But thanks you guys for hanging in there for over two hours. I appreciate it. It was fun hanging out with you. And um, I'll be posting some stuff and then try to hop on Sonara's um, team builder call tomorrow. It's, and if you, if you can't be on live, then just listen to the recording. So um, for those of you who missed that in the beginning, she's going to be doing like the next series of the team builder calls, digging into all these um, new training topics. I think she's really digging into the happy hour tomorrow to talk about um, just how to maximize that for the best for your, your business. So have a great rest of your fun day. That looks yummy, Jennifer. <laughs> I need a it's, a, it's vanilla shake with some blueberries. Ooh, that looks good. I didn't have my shake today yet. I was going to have it after my walk, but my walk is too long, and then here we are. It's five o'clock. So, okay, will you guys have a great rest of your Monday, and chime in on Team Awesome, and we'll talk to you soon. All right, love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Bye.